Hello everyone, it's good to see you back. I still haven't got any new Warlock Exotic for this season, so for now I just have to get more creative until then. Which is great, as I got a build that probably not a lot of people will have ever heard of. A Fell Winter's Helm with Cryophysia sounds like a man-man's build for nightmares, but it's actually kind of a sleepy huh? hit that doles out a bunch of debuffs from 30% debuffs, blinding via Deliberating Wave, Jolt Damage to our finishers via Facet Defiance, a damage reduction from Facet Protection, Wind Chill, and Total Carnage from our seasonal mods, etc. It's dumb, but it's fun, and only on this channel you'll see this get played out a lot. So, to start things off with the general aim and exotic of the build, our aim is to showcase the new seasonal mod that pairs well with the exotics that focus on finishers. We are also showing off a long forgotten exotic that usually is not seen in PvE. For this, we will be using Fair Winter's Helm and Cryophysia. A start with exotic armor, Fair Winter's Helm, with his exotic effect, Warlord's End, it states, A powered melee final blows create a burst of energy that weakens nearby targets. A finishers and final blows against more powerful targets increase the radius of the burst and length of the weakening effect. A Fair Winter's is generally a slept upon exotic that has an extremely powerful effect when procced. A single finisher, or powered melee, is enough to debuff enemies to around 30%, which is on par with Tether. While this is quite strong to use, it doesn't get the usage as much I would expect from players, which I might believe may be linked to it not having a passive secondary effect like most other exotics have. Nonetheless, it's quite easy to use, which makes it even more powerful when it's further combined with the mods or fragments that do damage over time on top of it, such as Facet of Defiance, for example. Our second exotic is Cryophysia 77k, with its exotic effect LN2 Burst, which states, A swap fire modes after a final blow to enable a charge shot, which instantly freezes targets. You may be wondering why this exotic is being used in PvE content, even though it's more of a PvP weapon. The behind pick to this is that its single shot pairs well with a close quarter build, whose whole design is to weaken enemies to pull off finishers. Secondly, its instant freeze attack is useful for going up against a group of enemies and you can't pull off your finishers in time or perfectly. And lastly, this will be working hand in hand with the seasonal mods we have for this season, especially wind chill for that free damage reduction. For aspects and fragments we have the following, a feed avoid where getting an ability kill will grant you devour, lightning surge where using your powered melee while sliding will launch you forward and bring down a lightning strike that will hit multiple enemies. A facet of protection where being surrounded by enemies will make you more resistant to incoming attacks. A facet of sacrifice where while having an arc, solar, or void buff. Ability final blows grant bonus darkness transcendence energy. A facet of dominance where void grenade debuff enemies while arc grenades jolts them. A facet of balance where rapidly defeating targets with light damage grants melee energy. A rapidly defeating targets with dark damage grants grenade energy. And Fast of Defiance, where finishers create a destination that either jolts, scorches, slows, severs, or make targets volatile based on the super equipped it. A lot of what's going to make this build work is through Fair Winter's Helm Exotic Effect and our seasonal mod. Having Fast of Defiance is a must for how heavily the build will lean into finishers on hand. I chose Arc Super for the Elemental Verb, simply because I didn't want its effects to clash with Deliberating Wave seasonal mod. So with the two in hand, Fair Winters would debuff enemies for 30%, while also blinding and applying jolt all the time. We also have Total Carnage on hand, which will grant us a damage reduction upon impact, so this further expands the build into two areas, safety and damage. Now the rest of the fragments are going to be a hit and miss with most players, since core of the build is already created. Balance, Dominance and Sacrifice can all be swapped out depending on what your wants and needs are. Of of course, I chose these as they still offer something towards a build like shown, but I do advise you to look into it as it might not be the same for you. Also, Lightning Surge is amazing when being used in highly contested areas, as one powered melee can do quite a lot of damage in a short amount of time. On the other hand, in endgame content, especially things like Master Raids, it does become a bit of a risky use if things do become much more harder to kill. This will be 50-50 depending on what you want to go with here. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked with the highest priorities for the build. A strength will also be used as shown. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. 
We don't have Concussive Dampener or Elemental Resistance mod, as we have replaced this with Wind Chill, which will grant us Frost Armor via Stasis Weapons, to the Carnage, Faster Protection, and Devour. These should be the same for you, and should expand the mod slots for other things you have in mind that you want to go ahead and add. Discipline, we then have ours at Tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via Storm Grenades. While we are using the faster dominance fragments for the extra debuffs they apply to our arc and void grenades, please stick with our grenades or swap out the fragment and grenades overall. We do not need more additional debuffs since Fell Winters and because of Reload are already being provided. Choosing my method or not is down to you, but at least with the art of grenades, once enemies are stunned, I can at least throw a grenade at them that will draw a wide number of enemies all at once. This will save you time instead of you needing to rely on your weapons instead. Now, since cooldown isn't really a huge issue here, you can invest into other areas shown. Impact induction times 2 for a 17% grenade buff. Momentum transfer for a 12% melee buff. And distribution times 2 for a 6% all ability buff will cover the ability regen of the build. Additional mods, we have the following. A stasis siphon for creating orbs of power via matching elemental types. Heavy ammo finder, reserves, and scavenger mods for a heavy weapon, a stasis surge mod for a 10% stasis weapon buff, stasis holder mod for automatically reloading our stasis weapons when stowed, and time dilation for armor charge decay rate to be reduced. As we have covered our exotic priming weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. What I recommend are all optional, so please keep this in mind. Our secondary is the Wild Style, Adept Grenade Launcher with Spike Grenades, Envious Assassin and One for All. As this season is focused primarily on stasis and grenade launchers, now's the perfect time to pull out this grenade launcher from your collection if you have one. As a double five frame grenade launcher, it will do a bit more damage compared to the single frame ones, which makes it ideal to use against the ultra tier enemies. My perks are focused on doing as much damage as possible against the more higher tier enemies we face, and is suitable pairing for my sidearm, which will struggle against the more bigger enemies. This weapon can be gotten from Zavala, so of course, go ahead and try and get one. Heavy, we have the Dimensional Hypertroid Grenade Launcher with Field Prep and Chain Reaction. One of the best heavy grenade launchers to use in game currently, it pairs well if you have the Concussive Reload mod to enhance your damage even further. This can be crafted, but if you don't want to wait, then the Typhon GL5 is a good alternative to get although both of them are two different things, in terms of weapon frames. The strength and effectiveness of what Felwinder's Helm can provide on the battlefield should never be underestimated in any formal way. What one Felwinder user can do, when compared to a single tether hunter, is near on par as long as you can activate its effect nice and clearly. As shown in today's clip, we are able to achieve this fairly well in Onslaught mode, a mode that requires you to think fast and hit hard the moment your encounter starts. And now using Fair Winters and Cryophysia together is a fairly new concept that has not seen my players, since the two have no synergy. Kind of. With this season seasonal mods at play, we are able to proc our Fair Winters buff on a more consistent basis via Total Carnage and Deliberating Wave, two mods that grant us a damage resistance and additional damage to targets within our area. A further combine this with Facile Defiance and you get one mighty headache of a build for everyone elected by it. A Cryophysia on the other hand is good for weakening targets for us to use our finisher more often than not, but that's not all. A using Wind Chill, one with Frost and Armor Ramis allows our build to play it safe while in close quarters, as long as we have that Frost Armor available. A Cryophysia, although a PvP weapon, is quite powerful in PvE with its exotic effect, something that many people will generally sleep on. This overall brings a build that focuses on using our finishers to set off a nice chain reaction of 30% debuff, additional damage via Deliberating Wave, arc damage to our finishers via Faster Defiance, and damage reduction from Faster Protection, Wind Chill, and Total Carnage from our Seasonal Mod. It's super simple to use while being fun to activate in a group of enemies. This can be brought pretty much anywhere you like, but you must keep in mind you will always need to play close quarters to fully experience the build as a whole. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoy the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts and content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. A dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, 
and I hope to see you again soon.